The ocean is rapidly heating up, hitting record-breaking levels. Are you ready to face North America's most dreaded weather monster? Get ready, because the effects of this upcoming event are going to be much bigger than we thought. Weather experts have been working hard to find a solution, but it looks like there's not much they can do to stop this approaching disaster. What is this enormous weather monster getting ready to unleash its anger upon us? The explanation lies in the cycle of temperature changes across the warm Pacific Ocean, which affects weather all around the world. When the East Pacific is cool, it's La Nina, and when it's not, well, you better buckle up and join us as we uncover the North America's biggest monster, and it's finally about to happen. In the eventful year of 2020, our planet experienced extremes like never before. September, in particular, made its mark in history as the warmest on record, surpassing the previous year by a mere 0.05 degrees Celsius. This scorching temperature was not confined to specific regions alone. It spread its fiery touch across the Middle East, the coast of northern Siberia, Australia, and parts of South America. But amidst this scorching heat wave, something else was happening in the enormous eastern equatorial Pacific, La Nina. However, La Nina isn't the only force that influences our climate. Its partner, El Nino, also deserves our focus. El Nino, often referred to as the warm phase of the El Nino Southern Oscillation, is a recurring climate pattern. It triggers fluctuations in water temperature within the central and eastern tropical regions of the Pacific Ocean, cycling over periods spanning three to seven years. During this cycle, surface waters in the tropical Pacific warm or cool by one to three degrees Celsius compared to normal conditions. This oscillating pattern of warming and cooling, known as the El Nino Southern Oscillation Cycle, directly influences rainfall patterns in the tropics and exerts a significant impact on weather systems worldwide, including the U.S. When El Nino events occur, equatorial winds weaken and warm water is propelled eastward, hugging the western shores of the Americas. This shift disrupts the upwelling of cold water, leading to a remarkable change in Earth's temperature. The consequences of this temperature change have a wide reach. When the waters become warmer, it causes the Pacific jet stream to shift its course towards the south. This leads to hotter and drier weather in the northern parts of Canada and the U.S. Interestingly, the southern states experience different weather patterns altogether. Over in the vast Atlantic Ocean, the influence of El Nino weakens hurricane seasons while simultaneously fueling hurricane activity in the eastern and central Pacific basins. In Africa, El Nino causes less rain in West Africa and Southern Africa and parts of Sahara. However, East Africa gets a lot of rain during this time. Even marine life is affected by El Nino. The warmer waters disrupt the upwelling of nutrient-rich water from the ocean floor, leading to a decline in phytoplankton, a vital source of sustenance for marine ecosystems. Consequently, fish are forced to seek more favorable habitats or face the consequences of staying in their current environments. The fascinating interaction of El Nino and La Nina reveals an enchanting story of how climate works. These massive influences shape the way that our weather behaves and have a lasting impact on ecosystems worldwide. As we explore their complex mechanics, we uncover the delicate harmony that keeps our planet's climate in check. Although they may appear as two sides of a coin, like yin and yang, they're quite different. When experts announce the arrival of El Nino, it means that sea temperatures in the tropical eastern Pacific are increasing, indicating the warm phase of El Nino Southern Oscillation. On the other hand, we have La Nina often referred to as the cold phase. Picture her as the girl, dancing with her partner. The westwood winds in the Pacific. During a La Nina, these winds become stronger than usual, pushing warm water towards the Asian continent. As a result, surface temperatures drop and nutrient-rich colder waters rise along the United States West Coast. La Nina's effects ripple across the land. The Pacific Northwest and Canada experience colder and wetter weather, while the southern part of the U.S. sees drier conditions. The jet stream shifts northward altering weather patterns across the continent. Winter temperatures became warmer in the south and cooler in the north, and in the Atlantic, while La Nina might give us a break from severe hurricane seasons, it fuels more powerful storms. But La Nina's influence doesn't stop there. It stretches across the entire world, leaving its mark on different regions. In Southeast Asia and Australia, wetter weather prevails, while East Africa faces drier conditions. It was truly amazing to see, and we got to see it up close not too long ago. Back in September 2020, something incredible happened. It was the hottest September ever recorded since they started keeping track of temperatures way back in 1880. The people at NOAA's National Centers for Environmental Information had to make sure that they documented this extraordinary occurrence. Amid a change in climate, the month of September came with a scorching surprise. The temperature soared to a new height, two degrees Celsius warmer than any other previous record. Any other. NASA and the European Copernicus Climate Change Service were in agreement, declaring it the warmest September on record. But interestingly, the Japanese Meteorological Agency had a different perspective, ranking it as the third warmest on their records. 
These variations in rankings are often due to different approaches in handling data-sparse regions like the Arctic. As the year progressed, the heat persisted, and the nine months from January to September averaged a striking 1.02 degrees Celsius above the 20th century average. This period, lasting nine months, claimed the second position as one of the hottest in history, falling just 0.04 degrees Celsius short of the record-breaking year of 2016. As anticipated, 2020 officially became one of the five warmest years ever recorded, confirming the ongoing pattern of rising temperatures from 2014 to 2020. The cause of this warmth phenomenon was the La Nina event, felt not only locally but worldwide. Regions like northern and central India experienced above normal temperatures. Take Delhi, for instance, where eight days in September registered above normal temperatures. The mean maximum temperature in the national capital hit 36.2 degrees Celsius, that is a whopping 3.4 degrees above the climatological mean for September 2020. Now, naturally, that came as quite a shock to the India Meteorological Department. Their data analysis revealed that September 2020 was 0.63 degrees Celsius warmer than the average in September temperature during the standard 30-year reference period from 1981 to 2010. Notably, it even surpassed September 2016, the second warmest September on record after 2019. In addition to the scorching temperatures experienced in India, Europe also faced its own heat wave in September. Last year, September 2020 turned out to be 0.2 degrees Celsius hotter than any previous record set in September 2018. The entire continent, particularly the southeastern Europe, felt the impact of these unusually warm temperatures. Meanwhile, across the Atlantic and United States, September 2020 was 1.1 degrees above the average, ranking it as the third warmest September in the past 126 years. The unique weather occurrence called La Nina lasted until 2022, making it the first time that we experienced three consecutive La Nina events in the 21st century. Meteorologists in the World Meteorological Organization, the WMO, were puzzled by its unusually long duration leading them to investigate its complex nature. Their study revealed a strong chance of a triple-dip La Nina lasting through 2022 and maybe even early 2023. And guess what? Their predictions turned out to be accurate. The National Weather Service confirmed an astonishing 91% likelihood of La Nina conditions sticking around from September to November. And although that decreased to 54% from January to March this year, that is still significant. Thus, 2020's La Nina solidified its position as the first triple La Nina event of the 21st century stretching across three consecutive years. However, much to our relief, it finally subsided in February of 2023, as indicated by the NCEP's final El Nino Southern Oscillation Alert. In February of 2023, something remarkable happened. Sea surface temperatures dipped below average and weakened, but now they persist only in the central Pacific Ocean. The latest Nino 3.4 index value stands at minus 0.2 degrees Celsius, and the Nino 1 plus 2 index value is a positive 1.1 degrees Celsius. All the data pointed towards the scientifically neutral phase of El Nino. When El Nino 3.4 index values fall below 0.5 degrees Celsius, it's considered at an end, ushering in a neutral phase. The Oceanic Nino Index, or the ONI, plays a critical role in meteorologist decisions, determining whether we are experiencing La Nina, El Nino Southern Oscillation, or El Nino. This index focused on the Nino 3.4 Central Equatorial Pacific region, and it serves as the primary indicator for these oceanic events defined by prevailing sea surface temperatures along the equatorial Pacific Ocean. But the tale doesn't stop there. La Nina has come and gone, and now our attention shifts towards something even bigger, a looming El Nino. Experts have been carefully watching the signals, and it appears that this climate phenomenon is indeed taking shape. Get ready, for when El Nino arrives, that could bring about significant consequences worldwide, potentially pushing us towards the dangerous levels of global warming that scientists have been cautioning us about for years. In recent months, average ocean temperatures have been rapidly increasing, further strengthening the theory that El Nino is on the way. It's intriguing how one giant force just ended, only for its counterpart to potentially arise just immediately afterwards. Till the question lingers, how certain are we that uh, an El Nino event is on the horizon? The anticipation builds, and the answer lies in the climatic dance between the Pacific's tropical waters, which holds the key to our planet's fate. El Nino holds the power to shake the very core of our planet. Picture this warmer than usual waters in the Pacific Ocean stretching along the equator, in particular the near South America. Recent months have witnessed a dramatic surge in temperatures within these regions, as revealed by advanced satellite data, but of course, there's more. Climate scientists also pay close attention to the winds, as they hold vital clues about the presence of El Nino. You see, in normal circumstances, the mighty Pacific trade winds guide warm surface waters towards Asia, pushing them westward. However, when El Nino comes into play, these winds lose their strength, altering the natural course of events. As we enter the early days of April, forecasters from the National Weather Service have uncovered a fascinating discovery. While strikingly warm waters have been observed near coastal Peru and Ecuador, 
the trade wind patterns remain relatively normal, offering no clear signs of El Nino's imminent arrival. But here's the twist. The weather experts have used the special models to predict what might happen with the climate, and it looks like there is a good chance El Nino's coming to town. In July, there is a 62% likelihood, but as we get closer to the end of the year, that possibility jumps up to almost 90%. The anticipation builds, capturing the attention of people far and wide, eager to uncover the truth behind this impending natural spectacle. However, finding concrete information about what's can, to be expected can prove to be quite a challenge. You see, El Nino is a complex character. It possesses the power to influence weather patterns across the globe, but, you know, its impact varies depending on your location. It's like a game of dominoes, where one action triggers a chain reaction. El Nino's warming waters and weakened mines in the Pacific create that symphony of events. The ocean's warmth fuels evaporation, leading to a rising motion in the lower atmosphere over the eastern Pacific. Massive clouds rise, creating tall structures in the sky from which rainstorms are born. These storms then begin on a journey moving towards the eastern direction. When these clouds full of moisture move through the air, they bring lots of extra rain to the southern part of the United States. Southern California has experienced some really strong El Ninos before, causing heavy rain and dangerous mudslides. It's worth mentioning that how bad it gets depends on how strong the El Nino is. Each event is unique, and it can vary quite a bit. Everything's ready, and everyone's waiting for El Nino to come. Will it cause dryness or heavy rain, hot weather or cold? The answer lies in its complicated interaction of warm ocean water, the movement of the atmosphere, and the delicate balance of powers. Now, imagine a mighty power lying dormant in the immense Pacific Ocean. When temperature and wind abnormalities come together just right, this force springs to life, transforming into the formidable phenomenon that we call El Nino. But here's the fascinating twist. While El Nino causes chaos in some places, it, its effects paint a completely contrasting picture elsewhere. In countries such as Indonesia, Southeast Asia, and Northern Australia, things start to go wrong. Drought becomes their unyielding enemy, causing great destruction to the land. And if that wasn't already too much, the lack of rain creates a perfect environment for something truly disastrous. The land becomes a battleground for fierce wildfires, tearing through everything in their path, just like the destructive fires that engulfed Indonesia in 2015. The devastation left behind is a daunting reminder of the power and the destruction unleashed by these uncontrollable infernos. But El Nino doesn't just stay in one place. Its upward movement over the Pacific Ocean sets off a chain reaction that affects the entire world. The air circulation patterns shift, impacting weather systems in the most unexpected of ways. In the Atlantic Ocean, El Nino becomes a puppet master, manipulating the formation of tropical cyclones. As it pulls the strings, the stage is set for a quieter hurricane season, leaving us in awe of its power to disrupt the norm. How does El Nino achieve such influence over the Atlantic? Well, it all boils down to the delicate interaction of wind and pressure. In the areas where Atlantic hurricanes form, El Nino takes control by creating strong, high pressures. These pressures are caused by the sinking motion of the atmosphere. These pressures create a challenging environment for tropical storms to thrive. The wind shear intensifies, causing winds to change direction and speed at varying altitudes. The result? It's like a complicated puzzle that tropical storms find hard to solve, making it rather difficult for them to gather strength and get organized. The most recent La Nina was a true survivor going bold for three strong years without interruption. In the U.S., La Nina brings drier and milder winters to the southern and eastern regions, while the Pacific Northwest and Great Lakes regions are in for some wet, cold, and snowy winters. But hold on. Let's dive deeper into the mystery of these mysterious weather phenomenons. There is something unusual about their names, right? Well, the explanation lies in the warm east and Pacific waters. Throughout history, observant fishermen off the western coast of Southern America noticed a curious pattern. In some years, the currents would change and the waters would warm up, driving their precious catch away. Interestingly, they were more likely to encounter this problem during December, just when El Nino's intensity peaks. Surprisingly, El Nino's name actually refers to the festive time of year close to Christmas. It translates to the Christ Child. But before you jump to supernatural conclusions, let's set the record straight. El Nino ain't no magic trick. It's been an integral part of our planet's natural climate oscillations for a long time. However, there's a twist in this weather tale. In recent times, the effect of El Nino seemed to become wilder, less predictable, and dare we say, more extreme. Some suspect that the climate change might have a hand in this unpredictable turn of events. The battle of El Nino and La Nina continues, shaping our world's weather patterns in ways that we're just beginning to grasp. These two weather giants may be fierce, but the story they tell is one of nature's undeniable power leaving us both in awe and wonder. In the world of climate science, there is a growing concern about the impact of extreme weather patterns. One marine scientist reveals a startling insight. 
As greenhouse gas emissions continue to rise, we might just witness more frequent and intense occurrences of the infamous El Niño and La Niña phenomena. These natural climate oscillations, once occurring roughly every other decade, could become more regular, a more powerful force, with devastating consequences for our planet. But what does that mean for the ever-looming threat of global warming? El Niño, known for its ability to raise global temperatures, has long been studied about greenhouse gas-driven planetary warming. The implications are alarming. The warm Pacific waters and increased evaporation caused by El Niño result in the ocean losing trapped heat to the atmosphere. Additionally, the heightened cloud cover from this process leads to more absorption of the sun's heat into the atmosphere, rather than the oceans themselves. And the outcome? A potential rise of a fraction of a degree Celsius in global temperatures, and that adds to existing challenges of current climate change. Experts like Robert Rond from Berkeley Earth predict that 2023 could become one of the Earth's hottest years on record, ranking second, third, or even fourth. Even in mid-April, there was a significant chance that a new record average annual temperature could be set if El Niño were to develop. This climatic phenomenon is expected to increase global average temperatures throughout 2023 moderately and into 2024. The past has shown us that transitioning from La Niña to El Niño often leads to a remarkable surge in global heat, as observed in the scorching temperatures of 2016. According to Michael McFadden, a senior scientist at the National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration, we're likely to witness a similar pattern once again a significant rise in global mean surface temperatures. It is a cycle that repeats itself, raising a pressing question, what do you make of the impending El Nino? Is it a powerful danger waiting in the shadows or just another example of nature's unpredictable behavior? As we explore the secrets of our changing climate, it really makes us wonder, are, are, are we ready for the powerful effects of a stronger El Nino? I mean, let us know in the comment section down below.